This video is an instructional video on how to paint interior walls of a small bathroom. Now these same methods will pertain to things like bedrooms and other bit larger areas. It is a more simplified method. There will be no spraying involved. It's simply brushing and rolling of walls only. Now the current condition of this bathroom is not the way it will look when we arrive to the job. The homeowners are asked to remove things like pictures from the wall, uh, things from countertops, shower curtains, that sort of thing. So when we resume, we'll get it to that stage. Okay, now the bathroom is prepared by the homeowner for us to begin our process. So here's items that I've brought in necessary for this project. Always lay out the cleanest drop cloth you have or 1.5 mil plastic. It's a runner outside of the work area. We have here a 12 inch paper with a hand masker with CP6, six foot masking film. Here's the paint we're gonna be using. In this case, it's cashmere, low luster. Extra tape, we have blue frog tape, sanding block, spackle, a clean rag, caulk gun, quick dry cleaning caulk, a roller pole, in this case I have a short one, it's a one two since it's a small tight space area. The drill for removing plate covers, anything else that needs to be removed from the wall ahead of time. My brush. This would be the cut pot. I like to use a weenie roller along with the brush in uh, small tight areas. Bathroom. My roller bucket with the regular nine inch roller frame and grid. These are items I'll have in my pockets. My knife and five and one tool. And a ladder. First thing I like to cover is the floor before we get going on any work in here. The next thing I like to prep inside a bathroom is fill any nail holes that need filled. You want to give enough time for the spackle to dry and set up prior to painting it. So after filling all the nail holes, I'm going to continue removing items that need to be removed, such as plate covers or any other items that are being removed permanently. Books, anything like that. So after removing those, the next thing I'll start prepping is the baseboards. We'll take those off. Prior to doing that, you want to dust them off, get all the loose dirt and dust off of them. So we're taping interior baseboards. We like to use the blue contractor frog tape. And what makes this tape different is it has a edge lock technology so that the edges, once dampened, release a, an adhesive or a, a sealer that will seal the edges so paint will not bleed through. I carefully follow the line at the top of the baseboard. Sometimes you need to set it back just a slight bit. You, this is what creates your sharp lines when it's completed. I'll do this continually around all the baseboards and doors. I'm gonna run tape around every switch and outlet. Run it around, around the edges, like so, and you can tuck it in. This is fine for brush and roll for spraying. We also cover that. Okay, for masking toilets, always remove the top lid. That gives us a little more access down. And we'll always put this in a safe location, out of the way. the six foot masking tape. Start it around the side, tucking it as far as the back 
as you can. This tank touches the wall, so it's difficult to get it back too far, but this will work. Let's tie it around there. Pull and release it. Toilet's covered. So with this frog tape, like I said, it has the edge lock technology and it's activated by being wet. So what I like to do is have a damp rag, clean rag, and just run it along. And this is also pushing in on your edge where you already taped. And this will activate that sealant. It dries rather quickly. And be ready when we're ready to paint. One area I we do like to caulk still is these edges where the countertop meets the wall. Just give it a little cleaner finish. Just a real small like bead of caulk. Just kind of fill in that, that cracked area. Tool it out with your finger. Get the excess with the rag. Like I said, we don't, we don't need a lot in there. Just, just to make that a smoother transition. Fill any open cracks between the countertop and the wall. Next thing we'll do prior to painting is sand anywhere we spackled or patched or any rough areas on the wall that need to be worked on prior to painting. So we're going to this lightly. All right, now we're ready to start painting. First thing we'll do is pour off some of the paint into my cut pot. I only like to fill it up a little over an inch. That way the brush does not go in too deep and it keeps it clean. I only tap off on one side of the bucket, keeping the other sides clean so I can lean my brush against it. It doesn't get covered in paint. So, first thing we cut in is the upper, the upper cuts. Do that around the entire room. First, then we'll do the lower sections, and then we're ready to roll. When I do cut in, you cut a nice clean straight line, and then brush it off low enough that you don't run the risk of when you roll, you don't have to go too high, so you don't risk hitting the ceiling. Okay, now that the bathroom is totally cut in, all the uppers, around the cabinets, around the mirror, all the lowers, completely around the toilet. Um, here's what a brush looks like after that. Still clean, no paint touching the ferrule. Lean it against there. Now we're gonna set up to start rolling the walls. All right, right now that we've cut in, we're ready to roll the walls. I put some paint in my five gallon roller bucket. I know normally we use a round bucket, but this is what I had. It fits, it works pretty well. So to get started, I'm gonna dump the roller into the paint, not completely immersed in it. I'm gonna stop short of this part of the frame getting into the paint. It'll make things a little nicer for that dripping later. So the roller pull, and I'll begin on this wall. Even pattern top to bottom. Working your way over. When you first begin, you do need to load up the roller a little more often until it gets completely loaded with paint. And 
And once you do a full section, then you want to sure and roll, uh, pack roll it. Keep it even and no uh, strong roller lines. time to put a fan in here, get it circulating. In the meantime, you can clean up all the extra things you're not going to utilize anymore in this project and uh, just wait for it to dry before starting step two. Alright, now that's had the appropriate time to dry, all the surfaces are completely dry, we will begin the second coat. Completed brushing and rolling the second coat, so it's done painted. We're going to start by cleaning up our paint that's in our buckets, and then we'll get on to pulling the tape and masking. Okay, so now that we're done painting, we're going to consolidate our paint back into the can. I like to do this first thing before I pull the plastic and the tape and the bathroom. So first thing we do is scrape out the roller, our 5-in-1 tool, and the excess off. And set that on a piece of paper. We will empty and use our brush to scoop out the excess paint from the roller bucket. Out the remaining paint from our cup pocket. I'm going to go ahead and leave this just sitting here until we're completely done pulling all the masking, just in case we have to do a few little touch ups. But I could go ahead and clean out the roller. start pulling the masking.
So I'll pull in the masking materials, start at the higher stuff and do the floor last. And also pay attention to anything you see that you need to come back for for touch-ups at this point. Now is the time to right away when you see something like this to use a white rag and wipe it off before it dries. See? Super easy to catch this thing, this sort of thing right away and take care of it. All right, now that we've cleaned up all the masking, including the floor, we've gone through and wiped and done any necessary touch-ups. So we're ready to put everything back together, put the toilet tank on, back on, and we'll replace the plate covers. And uh, once this is all finalized, we'll just clean up our materials, and we'll make another video on proper cleanup outside. So for this project, it's complete.